what's going on? This is Kex Next, and today I'm going to show you how you can create a really nice looking 3D lightsaber effect inside of Element 3D and After Effects. Now, uh, I found this method while I was playing around with Video Copilot's free Saber plugin, and this is a really great plugin when you're trying to um, composite lightsabers on live action footage or you're trying to do titles and things. And by the way, shameless plug, uh, I, got, I got a video on that on my channel right now. I'll leave a link in the description if you want to go check out my video on Saber. But this effect is a 2D effect. So when you're trying to do motion graphics, it's really not an effect that you want to use. So with that said, let's take a look at what we're going to create. All right, so it looks pretty cool. So to get started, let's create a new composition. So we go down here and click the new composition button and 1920 by 1080 is fine. And we'll call this Saber and hit OK or enter. Um, now we want to create a new solid. And to do that, we're going to hit Command Y or Control Y on Windows. And we're going to call this layer E3D and hit enter. Then we're going to right click in the effect controls, go down to video copilot and select element. And when that pops right up, you're going to hit scene setup. And you know, we have our basic grid and stuff. Maybe turn off the draft textures, but uh, we're going to use a model from a free pack on videocopilot.com or .net. I'm sorry. Uh, I'll leave a link in the description to this pack and it's a Star Wars model pack has a bunch of free models like uh, X-Wings and lightsabers and TIE Fighters and R2-D2 and stuff like that. It's really cool. But uh, I'm going to go ahead and uh, select the Darth Vader lightsaber from the pack. First thing I, I want to do, I want to have this lightsaber in an upright position. So to do that, I'm going to click on it, go to the orientation, go to the Z setting and set that to negative 90 and hit enter. And uh, this particular model doesn't come with a blade or anything. It's just the hilt. So we're going to make the blade. To do that, we're going to go up to the Create tab up here, and uh, we're going to create a capsule. And we're going to kind of move it up so that's at the top of the hilt. That looks pretty good. And we're going to click on the capsule model, go to the capsule settings, and turn the radius down. And then we just want to kind of reposition it so that it's towards the center of the hilt. That looks pretty good. And maybe change this to point 0.15. Yeah, that looks pretty good. And now we want to increase the height. So we're just going to change this. And keep in mind when you increase the height, it's going to change in both directions. So it's going to increase up top and on the bottom. So you want to make sure you move it up after you increase the height. So this looks pretty good. It's a pretty good uh, length. Um, now we want to kind of play around with the uh, the sides on this. So if I go into the wireframe mode, you can see how many sides this uh, capsule model has. And it's going to be glowing, so you re you're really not going to be able to see it you know, in like full detail. So we don't want to have to render that many sides. So uh, to change that, where you can just go down to the sides and change this to like half of what it is now, so like 15. And also for the cap segments, change that to 15 as well, because that'll cut down on those. But uh, now we want to change the roundness of this thing. And if you turn it down, it'll be more of like a uh, like a flat top at, at the top of our blade. But if you want to turn it up, it'll be more like a sword kind of. And I want it somewhere in between those two. So maybe something like that is good. That looks pretty good. And uh, now we want to change the illumination settings for this capsule. So we want to go to the materials, so twirl on the arrow, go to the default material, and click on illumination. Uh, here we want to change the intensity to 1200. And uh, you don't want to mess with any of the other settings like the Fresnel or anything like that. It's really gross. But uh, we want to change the color to the color that we want our saber to be. But we don't want to make it too saturated or else the blade itself will be that color and we want it to be completely white. So we're going to change it to um, like a kind of desaturated version of that color. So it's just on the brink of changing into that color, but it's still white. So somewhere in there, it's pretty good. That's what we want. 
and it'll kind of create a reddish light or whatever color your saber is. And so uh, once we have that, we're going to hit OK and it'll pop right up here. And right now we want to create a new camera. So to do that, we're going to hit layer, new, and then camera. And uh, make sure it's 35 millimeter or really you can change it to anything you want, but I'm going to use 35 millimeter. I'm going to hit OK. I'm going to hit C on the keyboard to bring up the uh, camera rotation tool uh, and kind of rotate around this. And you can kind of see how it's blurred out, and we don't want that. So to change that, we're going to click on our camera and hit AA on the keyboard, A twice. Go to depth of field and turn that off. And now we can kind of rotate around our object. So that looks pretty good. Um, we want to kind of work on the uh, glow settings on our saber. And so to do that, we're going to go to Element 3D and also maybe set the uh, the resolution to half. And that will just cut down on some of the rendering times while you're working. But we don't want to set the uh, render mode to preview. We, we don't want to do that because when we turn on motion blur, it won't render the, uh, the amount of samples that we've chosen. So keep this on full re render. Anyway, so go into the glow settings. Uh, click enable glow and change glow intensity to 0.1 and change the radius to you, really whatever you want maybe 6 I think does kind of well maybe 4 something around there you just kind of experiment around um, but this is where we want to change the lightsaber to the color that we chose and this is where we can, we can do a really saturated color so I'm going to do red and hit ok and you know it looks it looks fine but this color really isn't you know popping so to make it pop we can go down to the glow alpha boost and just kind of turn that up I might turn it to something like two and you can kind of see how that color just brightens right up maybe three now 2.5 is probably fine we really just want to brighten this thing up maybe turn the glow radius up now if you want to Something like that. Just experiment around with some of these settings, make it look really good. Uh, but now it looks like my saber's a little too dark, so you can go to the physical environment settings and turn the uh, exposure up a bit. So maybe like two, maybe like 1.75. And uh, go to the lighting, and where it says add lighting, you know, play around with some of these. I think I like 360 the best. I'm going to change the brightness multiplier to 200%. And, uh, you know, now we have this really cool looking lightsaber. And this already looks really good. And you can use this for all sorts of different effects, like motion graphics or something. Um, but, you know, let's say you want to move this lightsaber around. So if I go to Element 3D, I go to Group 1, Particle... Uh, I'm sorry, we want to go to create group null and hit create. And what this does is just create a 3D uh, null that we can use to control our object. So if I set a keyframe for, let's say, X rotation and move forward three seconds and set uh, this value to two, you can kind of see how it's spinning around. Um, but you can kind of see how whenever it's spinning, it's just kind of like this rigid blade that's, it doesn't have that blur that you see in the movies. So to do that, uh, motion blur takes away some of the glow. So first thing you want to do is go to the scene setup in element 3d and you want to brighten up the intensity. So maybe change this to like something like 1700, maybe 1800. Enter and hit okay. And it's already brighter, but uh, we're going to turn on, we're going to go to motion blur, go to where it says comp settings and turn that on. Change the samples to 10 and the shutter angle to 300. Um, and now, you know, you got this saber that's, you know, kind of flipping around, but some of the glow is missing from the top. Maybe you can even change the intensity to even, you know, even brighter. And uh, go to the glow settings. And you want to change some of these settings so that you can kind of see the glow more on this model. You can even turn the alpha boost up if you want. 
you just want to make this glow a little bit more uh, noticeable because it's going to be blurred out. So just play around with some of those settings and uh, let me know how it goes. That looks pretty good. So, you know, if we play this back, maybe we can go to the motion blur and change the shutter angle to 400. We'll see how that looks. It's just gonna render real quick. So you can kind of see how it's moving around. You know, you maybe want to turn the motion blur samples up to something like 20. It'll just kind of fade it better. But it it's, it uh, takes longer to render because you know you're rendering more motion blur samples. So be careful on that. But that looks pretty good. So what I've done, I've just went and unlinked the null and deleted some of the keyframes. I've gotten some of, I've gotten rid of some of the motion blur. Um, but now we're gonna look at experimenting with some depth of field and stuff like that. So I'm gonna find a really nice angle where I kind of have the blade in the background and the audience is gonna be able to uh, see it. Maybe create a new null object and you'll put that above the camera and hit F4 or toggle switches and modes if you don't have on a Mac if you don't have you know your F key set up uh, but you want to make this null a 3D layer and you want to go to the camera and link it to the null and so now you can use the null to control your camera so I'm gonna do that real quick and you guys play around with the position of the null and uh, I'm trying to move it kind of closer to the, my lightsaber. I want to kind of get a close-up shot of this thing. And you can also play around with the orientation and stuff like that. I've repositioned my camera to a pretty good angle, I think. And uh, we want to go to the camera and hit AA twice, so AA. Not AA twice, when I want to hit A twice. Um, so AA, not AA twice. You, you, you know what I mean. Uh, but anyways, go to the camera, go to depth of field and turn it on. Uh, turn the aperture up to 45. And change the focus distance to the front of the saber. You want to maybe maybe turn the uh, aperture up a little bit more, something like a 65. Just kind of want to blur that blade out. Maybe again, change the focus distance so it's a little bit higher. Something. But that looks pretty good and you know you want to play around with some of the glow settings so maybe turn the glow radius up the alpha boost up so like three um the glow intensity some to uh, a little bit higher because it'll be blurred out you know what actually no keep the glow intensity the same but the uh, radius maybe turn that up so you can kind of see that saber and uh, that looks pretty good I was just kind of showing you how you can set up a really cool shot with the saber if you want. But I think it looks pretty good. Maybe put some stuff in the background. Uh, what I did here, I created a plane in Element 3D. Uh, here I'll show you what I have set up. I created this plane in Element 3D and I uh, did a different lighting setup and I changed the background to a city. And I played around with some of the environment settings until I got something I really liked. And uh, again, I just played around with some of the settings in there. I think I even added a lens flare to the saber itself. And uh, I animated the the lighting in the scene. Make it look like there's cars going by or like a busy city scene. I think that's pretty cool. But, um, you know, I hope you create something really cool with this, with this technique. Uh, I have a Twitter. It's a link in the description. Please, you know, send me stuff that you guys create. I really like seeing it. So uh, that's going to be it for this video. Please like, subscribe, share this video. Please leave a comment down below uh, saying what you want to see in another future video. But uh, I'm Kex Next, and I will see you next time.